Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays, they can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back, and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com. The following is brought to you by the Social Suplex Podcast Network. This is John Silver, lead recruiter of The Dark Order, and you are listening to All Things Elite. Welcome to the 170th episode of Social Suplex's podcast about AEW with a proclivity for positivity. Welcome to All Things Elite. My name is Austin Sumwitz and I am the host of this lovely show. Joining with me, as always, is my good buddy and friend Floyd Johnson Jr. My main man, how are you doing? Man, I am doing great. Uh, I just finally got to watch some of the dynamite that I missed from last week, so that was exciting. Uh, we had a great weekend, watched some football, watched some wrestling, looking forward to this weekend and this week's Diamond of Dynamite. I'm very excited. No, we're not a WWE show, I know this, but honestly, I have not been as excited and anticipatory for a match as I am for Brock Lesnar versus Bobby Lashley in Saudi Arabia on Saturday. I am very excited. See, you had me into the Saudi Arabia part. Well, you know what? See, sometimes this is what you can do, right? I saw. I, I think I've only watched, I watched the Greatest Royal Rumble live. N- none of the other shows have I really watched. So, it's and it's not like, oh, I'm just like, oh, I'm a political, trying to stay away from it. Just not, generally not a, a lot of interest. <laughs> but if you, t- I am a big meaty men bumping meat person, slapping meat. That is my thing. And when you talk about big meaty men slapping meat, there is over the last twenty years there are probably to been not two more dominant, physically imposing beasts as much as Bobby Lashley and Brock Lesnar. So you get that, then you get what could has the biggest chance to go from either a sit show or really good. You got seven three almost. Against the monster of all monsters, Ron Strowman. If you talk about spectacle, you talk about what WWE was built on for a lot of years, man, that's those two matches are like WWE to the core. I will say once they stop being glorified house shows, I'll give them a chance, but they gotta they gotta get consistent. They had one good Saudi show last year. I need I need a consistency thing. Once you can get a couple good ones under your belt, then I'll be you know what, gung-ho about it. But before we get to everything else, the most thing I'm most excited about is that it's the Christmas season, baby. And I want to explain everybody what I mean by Christmas season. November 1st, January 6th, 
that is the Christmas season. Everything in there is the Christmas season. Thanksgiving. Love Thanksgiving. I'm fat, so my favorite <laughs> holiday. Uh, one of my favorite holidays, I get to literally eat and be gluttonous all day. So I'm not skipping over Thanksgiving. Thanksgiving is inside of the Christmas season, including Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And then, you know, you get to count down to Christmas, Christmas Eve. But this is such a thing. This is such a thing for me. I'm like, I want to put those. I'm like, fire up, uh, put your lights up, put your trees up, do all your shit. Because this is an amazing time of year. Even Austin knows last week. I was starting trying to get ideas for Christmas gifts. Oh, yeah. Dude, that's, this is what I do. This is my time of year. Uh, uh, a few, a few my, niece, my nieces call me Black Santa all the time because I just love to give gifts. So this is my favorite time of the year. It, it, it gets me going. It gets me all reared up. So, And then I found out the greatest news ever. Well, not the greatest news ever. I'm being hyperbolic, but really good news for someone like me, a big old Christmas guy. Peacock signed a deal with Hallmark. So like the WWE has their own little thing inside of Peacock, there will be a Hallmark app where you can watch live Hallmark t move TV and they're going to have all their Christmas movies uploaded. So that's basically Floyd in a candy store right there. Love me some cheesy ass Hallmark Christmas movies. Oh, they're cheesy. Oh, they're terrible. Oh, you know who's going to end up with who within five minutes. But I love them. It's consistency. It's something you can count on. Yeah, I, be I believe that for sure. Yeah, and that's yeah. it's gonna be it's gonna be very very exciting to get close to that point. But yeah. we got to get into the AEW stuff that we're gonna be talking about this week. We got a lot to talk about with Dynamite and Rampage that took place last week. As we go into this week's AEW Dynamite that we'll be previewing as well. But before we get into everything, we want to make sure you guys are downloading this fine show on Google or Apple Podcasts. And if you listen to us on Spotify or wherever you choose to listen to us, you can give us a share with your friends, family, coworkers, whoever you wish. Uh, but the easiest way for you guys to support us is if you leave a rating and a review. But you can also support us by following us on Twitter. We are at AT Elite Pod on Twitter. At Social Suplex are the guys that make this show possible. So please check out all the other shows they have on their network. I am at Austin Sumowitz, S-Z-U-M-O-W-I-C-Z. -Z, and Floyd is at Floyd Johnson Jr. on Twitter. Now, the biggest news that we've got from AEW this week and these this past week is the mentioning and the showcasing and the teasing of the elite. Matt Jackson, Nick Jackson, the Young Bucks, and Kenny Omega. There was a specific... Uh, segment that took place on Dynamite, uh, and it was a really well done. Might as well just mention it now because it was one of the big talking points from Dynamite last week. Was they had talking points about the Young Bucks and Kenny Omega talking about AEW and how the Elite got everything going and all this types of stuff. And they showed multiple moments in the AEW lifespan of. Uh, uh, the elite, uh, we had them all posing in the middle of the ring, and then they fade away. We had the Young Bucks in Vegas for the Double or Nothing presser before they got beat up by the Lucha Bros. Then they disappear. Kenny Omega with Don Callis, he disappears. And they also they opened it with the, the reveal of AEW as a company on being the elite with the phones fading away from the Double or Nothing and AEW logo. And then eventually... They have all of the elite in the ring when they won their trios titles and before they got suspended. And they start fading away, as does the E in the AEW logo. And then AEW logo entirely fades away. And that's got people itching for the inevitable return of the elite as we continue to see uh, things are wrapping up in this all-out uh, controversy. It seems like we know who's staying, who's going. Uh, even though there's not much official other than the Don Callis, uh, I mean, not the Don Callis, the freaking what the hell is his name? Uh, Bitey McBite person, uh, him being suspended. Yeah, and A like, Steel. It, A Steel being, being suspended and then fired. So we have the elites soon to be making their returns. We don't know when, but uh, it's huge. It's absolutely massive, and it's so. It's so good to be looking forward to it. I'm ecstatic for when they return. 
Um, I guess I'll go to Floyd too with that segment itself, like in just like how he's feeling with the soon to be returning elite. So, uh, of course, I am full gears coming up, and I'm going to be there. So the idea that they might be back and they might somehow squeeze themselves on the full gear would make me very excited. Uh, I am, you know, this whole thing, you know, I've always been like reluctant. You know, I was like, man, Team Punk, you know, that kind of thing. My <laughs> team, who shows up, dude? Who wants to come to work and wrestle? Hey, that's what team I'm on. Who wants to come to work and entertain me? So it looks like the lead are coming to work to entertain, and I'm very excited about that. I mean, again, Harry, uh, Kenny Omega, one of the best wrestlers in the world, if not the best. Young Bucks, one of the best tag team in the world, if not the best. Depends on your opinion and what you like about wrestling. It's just... They add to the company. I mean, there are so many different stories that can be told. There are matches that we've been waiting on since. Because, you know, Kenny was injured a long time, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. And he came back for, like, what, two matches, three matches maybe. And then he was gone again. So we haven't even had a Kenny Omega singles match in the better part of a year. Literally since last full gear, we, since we've had a, a Kenny Omega singles match. That's too fucking long. Life is. is too short to go that long without watching Kenny Omega wrestle. Right? So let's go. Let's get him back here. Let's get him in a feud. Let's get to Omega and Brian Danielson as quickly as possible. I am just like really excited about what they can do. Shit, let's do let's do Lucha Bros in uh, Paca, uh the Death Triangle versus the Elite at full gear. Banger. I'm talking banger. I don't care who wins. That's that's like four stars going into the ring. And then you just move from there. So I am just so excited about them going up. There's a level of competition and excitement and love and everything that comes up with the elite is going going like literally the E in AEW has been gone and now it's coming back. Yeah. I mean it's it's great. And honestly it's just you you're you're starting to see like you know we we know what the investigation is withhold and we know whose whose story is proving true whose is not, and it seems like not only do the elite, are are they ready to come back to work, but also it seems like people want them to come back to work as opposed to the other side. Yeah. I'm not talking about that anymore. But regardless, I'm stoked about it. I am very excited for when the elite eventually makes their return. I know a lot of people were thinking because of that segment that that meant the elite were returning that dynamite, and I say no because it seemed like that was like the whole, like, you know what, hey, we mentioned them, Keep watching because they're coming back. We just don't know when. Um, but regardless, still a huge uh, thing. Dude, dude, you understand. Like, I'm not many times where I'm not like a, oh, people are stupid thing. I'm like, you know, people, everybody has their thing. But yeah, I slapped my head when I saw that. I was, I was like, <laughs> what is going, what? That's not how they do this in wrestling. In what wrestling? Do they do vignettes for someone leaving the company? Huh? I don't know. In the history of wrestling. When, like, I could see if he was injured like Edge was, maybe. But come on. They're not, they're not going to do vignettes for someone leaving the company for disciplinary reasons. Are you stupid? I, I'm just like, I, I, I'm asking <laughs> I'm just like this is this is a legit question. Like, yeah. and it, like this is I don't know. I, I it's like for the life of me, I'm like I watched it and I watched it back and then I heard that and I watched it again and I'm like I I, I couldn't come to the conclusion. I couldn't put myself in that mind space. So someone please explain it to me. Seriously, at that point. But regardless, uh, it's going to be huge when they eventually do come back. But we're going to get right into the AEW Dynamite review from last week that took place in Norfolk, Virginia. And we opened up the show with a tag team match between the Ring of Honor World Champion and Pure Champions, Chris Jericho and Daniel Garcia of the JAS, facing off against Claudio Castagnoli and Wheeler Yuta of the Blackpool Combat Club. And it was a very good opening match. I mean, dude, you literally had Chris Jericho getting swung around by Claudio while Daniel Garcia is on Claudio's back. So, I mean, it was great. That that alone made it for the match for me. And we actually had Claudio getting the pinfall win 
over Chris Jericho. And the Blackpool Combat Club continues to run wild, even though there is a little bit of problems between Wheeler and Brian Danielson from what we've seen the week before and all that kind of stuff. But regardless, they're still winning. They're still doing a lot of great things. I thought this was a good opening match. It's not the best opening I feel like they've had, but it definitely had a huge moment for sure with that massive spin uh, that Claudio hit because it was great. It was awesome. Dude. Um, Claudio is one of those people that you look at and it's just like he always looks like he's 26 first of all and every time he gets going it's just amazing he just can do it athletically and physically do things that just other people can't and it's just it's it's an honor to watch it and then you know you had that uh and like you know he did the film. Wait, what's what's going on? You're like a really loud noise, like a fan or something. Yeah, I think a fan just turned on somewhere in my house. Sorry about that. I was I, my mic was muted. I don't know how you heard that. I don't know, but I heard it. <laughs> so uh, no, this fucking Yeti mic, dude. I swear to God, dude. I'll I'll edit it out. But um, no, Claudio is fantastic at the at the the wrestle grabs. Uh, he's just like one of those people that like his average match is good. And then it goes from there. So the fact that he gets to pin on Jericho, right? He pins Jericho, right? Yes. Yes, so he that pins means Jericho. We're probably getting Claudio versus Jericho at Final Battle. Uh, so I think that's good. I, I'm down with that rematch at Final Battle. I think that's a good, uh, a good, um, you know, secondary main event title. You know, the main event is whatever FTR is in, of course. So I'm looking <laughs> yeah. forward to... I'm looking forward to them being added to the show. So that's going to be a good match. No, for sure. That's going to be a good match. We then had Renee Paquette uh, having an interview uh, with Brian Danielson. And uh, he was talking about how he was going to take out all of his frustrations on Sam Guevara. And Yuta was not happy coming back from the match looking at Danielson. And he at one point said, I'm not your son, I'm a grown man, and just was getting very up and up at Brian's face, which received a slap because of that. And then Claudio and Regal came in, and they separated them, and they were like, listen, after Danielson's match, we're going to go out, we're going to go into the back, we're going to go into our locker room, we're going to sit down, and we're going to talk this out, and we're going to, we're going to treat, we're going to be like, be adults and get this all sorted out. So we're going to go to our locker room after this next match. Um, they made sure to insist on that. Uh, and then we also had Jericho get interviewed backstage, being upset, blaming Claudio because he brought in the bat during their match on that show. Uh, and he also issued an open challenge to any former Ring of Honor World Champion to face him for the Ring of Honor World title next week on Dynamite. So we we don't know who Jericho's opponent is uh, for tonight when you guys hear this, but we know it's a former Ring of Honor world champion. Please be the one I think it is. Okay, so who do you think it is? I know we can talk about it in the show, but I'm interested now. I'm not, I'm like I'm I'm I like I'm just like I said it just to piss people off, honestly, because they know who I identify as my Ring of Honor world champion. Oh! Oh, yeah, I didn't even think of I'm that. Fucking, I'm fucking around with people. Oh, because, no, no, no. no I, I, don't, I don't know. Tyler Black, I don't know, dude. Who could, who the fuck could it be? Oh, my God. It's it, it's going to be CM Punk. It, it has yeah, to be. No, it has to an be. An injured, crippled CM Punk. Just ready an to injured, go. injured, crippled, <laughs> bitter. Yeah. I'm just going to stop myself now. <laughs> just ready to go. Just ready to fight. No, um... Yeah, um... I, I my my guess has been Colt Cabana. That'd be sick, honestly. I you know with the whole whole idea that uh you know he something might have happened you know where he uh, was out. I just think it should probably just makes sense that it's Colt Cabana. And then you kind of get it out in the open. You're like, hey, let's calm the fuck down. It's all done. Yeah, but but, yeah. I, but at that t- but at that point too, like if that is the case. The buyout news has to come out the like literally hours before Dynamite, so that way we got it all out of the way. Yeah, and you know most and most he's of, gone. Look, it's Colt Cabana. Be happy. Most importantly, in his bottom thing where it says Colt Cabana, it has to say 
shares a bank account with his mom. It has to. It or has to. Page style, yeah. Just like go go <laughs> make the joke out of it. <laughs> you have to. He's made the joke on Twitch already. Yes, you have to. It has to say shares an account with his mom. <laughs> which, has to. Which I always I thought was funny too because literally until she passed away, me and my mom had an account. She didn't have access to it, but she was on it because we opened it when I was sixteen. So. You know, when you're 16, you open a bank account. Guess who has to be on your account? Who has to be on that? Yeah. Yeah. So I technically shared an account with my mom for like 13 years. God damn it! Don't think, don't think less of me, CM Punk, please. please. Well, that's fine. <laughs> no. <laughs> but we'll move in though. Now we got to get into it. So the AEW World Tag Team Championship. So we can we don't have to talk about my guy anymore. We can talk about your guys. Uh, AEW World Tag Team Championship number one contenders match between FTR. And Swerve in Our Glory, and we had Austin and Colton Gunn who were ringside who were mocking FTR. They did that one great mocking when they were doing the meet and greet, and they came out, and they were dressed up as FTR, and they were being dickheads and all that kind of stuff. But okay, it's 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 time for our resident FTR fan and Dax and Cash fan to go ahead and since he's... So, last week, I didn't get to watch... Fact, uh, yeah, so, yeah, so last week, I didn't oh, get to watch... You get to watch it live. So I get to come with the hot. I just watched it 20 minutes ago. So, yeah, really good match. Really exciting match. Uh, you could tell they were trying to go really hard in the time that they had because there were a few mistakes, just a few sloppiness. I'm weird. I will tell everybody this. Everyone should know I'm weird by now. I like a little sloppiness in my wrestling. I, 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 I've always have and always will. It's not just because it's FTR. It just... You know, that reality to it. It brings a reality to it. So, I don't know. So, uh, that being said, um, yeah, really, uh, Keith Lee is phenomenal. That dude is, the reason I say this is because he's so big, so quick. And you know what you don't hear about him doing? Hurting people. You know what I mean? He's so massive that, you, you know what, it seems like, he could like move his left arm wrong way and knock someone out kind of thing. So he has this where he does the double leapfrog and then he does the double splash on FTR. Amazing cash cash. I got to call him out. Got to call my boy out. He threw a super kick cash threw a super kick in this match to, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Keith Lee. I'm not saying he's never done one, but it was just like, it just stuck out to me. And then I think he basically based out of hurricane Rana, but the reversals to the moves were really cool. Uh, Dax trying to pick up uh, Keith Lee and not being able to. And Swerve was a perfect dick through this whole match. It was like you have a match where three people are face and technically one guy is kind of playing a heel. And you think that could not work. But the way Swerve did it, everything that he did sneaky or underhanded, he made sure Keith Lee didn't see including the end where Dax is busting, uh, uh, backing up to the ropes. Uh, Swerve sticks his arm in, nut shot to uh, Dax, which, again, you have to understand the storyline. Swerve thinks all of this is justified because he was screwed out of his tag team title, right? He, like, he got cheated out of his tag team title, so it's justified. So he gives Dax a nut shot. Keith Lee doesn't see it, hits Dax with, uh, what are they calling that move? It's a big move. I the big rig? Was, uh, no, uh, Keith Lee's move, the slam. I know it was called a big man collider in the. the uh, oh yeah, I can't, I can't remember. I don't know what they're calling it. Uh, but and then what on, are they? Yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, I don't know what they're calling it. Yeah. Yeah. Then on the outside, Austin, uh, Austin and um, Colton, Colton are holding. Uh, are holding back cash so he can't make the, the pin. So you want to talk about protecting a tag team called double protection. Not only did you know he take the nut shot, then they made sure cash was being held. That's the only reason he didn't save him for the three. I just thought this was an excellently done match. It was everything we were supposed to be. And of course, if you listened to the show last week, kind of told you FTR was going to lose. I, I remember saying that. So no, there was no bitterness in me. I enjoyed the match. I can't wait to see where this is going. It's funny because FTR is in a position to try to elevate another tag team as with the guns because, you know, the guns aren't on FTR's level. 
But FTR is about to try to drag them up there, so I'm really looking forward to this. But excellent match. Hats off to Swerve. Hats off to Keith Lee. Oh, God, they're breaking up so soon. It's crazy. It is It is genuinely crazy. It is absolutely crazy that that's going to be when that happens for sure. But, yeah, yeah, it was a, it was a good match that did have a little bit of sloppiness in it. But for sure, I, again, and I, I know... I know FTR is out here posting like you know Instagram posts because you saw the one where they were posting their 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 tri- their trip their their uh, trio of matches that they had against Alpha American Alpha and all the all these like kind of going through retrospective career almost like like you know how much more can we do this and I'm like well they're working yeah and I see that but at the same time too you know I'm. I'm excited to see when FTR eventually does get to that point where they do get the number one contendership because, A, at that point, hopefully, you know, we're going to get to a point because I don't know what an FTR, uh, an F, like, if you had to make people choose between FTR and uh, the acclaimed, I don't know how that would turn out, if it would be a good idea because I feel like you'd piss off a lot of people depending on who won. Because I don't know, man. I just, it just, I feel, I, I, I feel like it's hard to make people choose. No, no it's a complete no win situation. I mean, I do think uh, the acclaimed are so over that they might, but I think the pops on them would be crazy. It, but it's a no win situation. You don't want either team. Yeah, like the acclaimed are so hot right now. They need to lose to Hills. I feel the same way about FTR. Even when if they lose any of their tag belts, they need to lose to Hills because they're so popular. And, uh, yeah, and uh, FTR is actually going to be on New Japan, in Japan, this Saturday morning. Uh, I, forget, I think it's called, like, Autumn Collision or something like that. And they're going to be in a match defending their New Japan titles against Jeff Cobb and the Great Arcan from the United Empire. So, my boys, stay strapped. Stay with the, stay with them belts. Not talking about guns. I'm talking about staying strapped up. They always got titles. They always are doing something important. So, I'm really looking forward to that. But, yeah, uh, I, I could watch Keith Lee and Swerve against FTR, I just imagine them at a pay-per-view where they're, you know, they got like 30 minutes. Oh my God, I think just think this would have elevated it so much more. So for this great TV match, this was awesome and great, and I really enjoyed it. Yeah. There was a backstage segment with Britt Baker and Soraya uh, arguing, but the best part about it was just when Renee just screamed and told them to shut the fuck up, pretty much. Dude, That's really all- Renee was so featured on the show and I she think that's going to be what they're doing uh going forward but it is still crazy how much she was just featured how many okay. backstage segments now, and they were can, all with I, her so i got i got something i want to say and i'm going to sound mean for this though i'm going to i'm going to sound really really fucking mean for this i want i want to i want to preface this by by saying this but i have to say with this in mind, because of the amount of usage that we're getting when it comes to uh, uh, Renee Paquette on the broadcast team, why the fuck is Alex Marvez still here? I think he does more in the back than do interviews. I just okay, think, well, okay, and that and that's fine and all that kind of stuff. But why is he on television? I don't know. I, I kind of like him because he's kind of the dork that people bully. I, I, I get it, you know. No one takes Marvez seriously. Like Renee, we already have a dork. His name's Shivani. Yeah, but you know, you got you got you got Alex Marvez on there. I mean, is he is his position kind of like, you know, obsolete at this point? Probably, but you know, he's he's been around since the beginning, so I always have a soft spot for those people. I understand. I was going to say, like, I... He's an AEW original, baby. He he was there. He was there. And I I wanted him off of commentary the second I heard him on Double or Nothing 2019. You you did, but he was there. And it's just like, it's like some people, he's like the, he's the commentating announced team mascot. You know, he's just there. Alex Morris. Do do all you with all the work you do in the back. I got nothing but respect for what he's done. If he's done stuff in the back that nobody else has seen, I'm sure he has. You I know, feel like everybody got, he has to been he has to have done a lot to still be here. I think everybody in AEW has at least two jobs. You know, that's Probably. what it feels like. 
It feels like that kind of company where it, like no one just does one thing. You know, no one just shows up and wrestles. You know, there are people always coaching or getting involved. So I imagine Marvez does a lot more in the back. So let's give this man one job and have it not involve television because dude, I swear to God, dude, like, be, I'm, I'm, and when he was on, on, and when he was on the final segment of this show too, and I'll talk about it. Oh dear God. I just no. He could be the uh, backstage announcer on dark and dark elevation. Boom. That's fine. Like Boom. it's fine. Go ahead. I found a role for him. It's perfect. Just keep him off TV. You're so mean to Alex. I oh, am. Man. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm picky with my commentating. I'm picky with my backstage stuff. Renee being here has been a huge jolt, especially with the backstage reporting stuff. She's so good, and it's so clear how well she is in that position. And it just continues to be like the fact that I'm still seeing Alex and in main event segments as well. Like, no, no. Can't hey, you can't get rid of. You can't get rid of. He's stealing money. Okay. Yeah, no, hey, that's funny. So it's funny that you got to call him that because I think I've brought this up before. There's a guy named Joe Lanza on The Voices Wrestling who literally calls him stealing money Marvez. That's his <laughs> name. That's his name. He doesn't call him Alex. He calls him stealing money Marvez. I, like, like, it just, I, uh, uh, it's just, it's just so funny. So no, it's and he's called I'm, a, I'm a, mean, I'm a mean person who's picky with my commentary. I'm not trying to be like disrespectful or like take an attack on Narvez as a person, but I just don't like him. I right. just don't. Hey, you know what? And that is your right as a human. Like I said, I don't really care about commentary. He's fine. I don't really notice him. He's just the faceless person there. It's like Renee when she's there. It's like she commands some authority. And, you know, of course, all the tight years in WWE, I just have a genuine affection for Renee, so I'm always going to want her to do well. I don't really have that same thing for Alex other than, you know, he's been there. He's already there, you know, kind of thing. <laughs> Regardless, we go into the next segment, uh, which was MJF being interviewed by Renee. Um, and she she asked MJF basically like if Moxley retains tonight you know you're going to be facing him at full gear and like what's your mindset going into that whole idea and um he uh did the whole with all due respect thing and said uh when it comes one more one word that comes to mind with Jonathan is mid and he uh and then that was when Renee's response was, you can't just say with all due respect and then just say something like disrespectful. And she goes, he goes, with all disrespect, shut your mouth. <laughs> and beautiful, beautiful. And he said, last week when I said I was going to earn it, I meant what I said. He's like, I kind of got carried away when I said I was going to wrestle the whole thing clean. I mean, come on, guys. I'm, I'm still MJF. It was very cheeky with this promo, I will say, like on the nose and all that. Um, and he said, listen. When Regal said he used his brass knuckles only because he wanted to, not because he needed to, uh, it alluded to the fact that he uses the dynamite diamond ring, and he has to use it. So he said, listen, I promise, at full gear, I will not use my dynamite diamond ring because I don't need it. I only need a grudge, and I'm chock full of them. And he said, I'm not fighting Regal. I'm not fighting Moxley. I'm not fighting Penta. I'm fighting every single scumbag who said I wasn't good enough. And he said he's going to take the chip that's on his shoulder and shove it down everyone's throats when he becomes AEW World Champion. He gets interrupted by Stokely Hathaway, and he's like, listen, I get it. And he's like, he's, I know you want Mox 100% at full gear while he's talking. The microphone gets hit out of his hands. And he said, listen. If Moxley gets past, past Penta, I need him at 110%. You don't touch him. You don't look at him. You don't do a thing to lay a hand on him because I want no excuses. And if you do lay a hand on him, you're fired. And so he's like, okay, pats him and then goes away. And then MJF says his, his line, he's better than you. You know it. Give everybody the applause. If this, if again, th this show... Played around with the babyface idea of MJF, and they, we'll we'll talk about it more in the main event. But yeah, it was interesting, just like how like his uh, his promo stuff that he's been doing recently. Like he's still a dick, but he's a lot more tongue in cheek now as opposed to just being straight up a prick. You know what I mean? 
And it's like more like, you know, playing to the audience way more and, you know, getting them involved and doing a lot more things that are are genuine like babyface tactics, like getting people to say your catchphrases and then doing all these types of things and talking to the audience, being like, you know, guys, and then eliciting responses when you say it a lot more. And it's not like he didn't already do that in his promos. He absolutely did. Uh, but it just seems like in a different fashion right now. So the idea of like MJF, they're playing around with MJF being a babyface. Like, I think there's likes to that and you get, you get even more of that in the main event when we'll talk about that. But it, just from this promo alone, Floyd, give me your thoughts on this whole ordeal. Dude, um, MJF is rarefied air. He is the rock doing his hottest part of raw, just showing up, giving a mic and just kind of riffing for like 15 minutes and, you know, calling people jabronis and pie. That's how I feel with him. You can give him any subject in any location and tell him what you want the fans to do, and they're going to do it. If he wants them to boo, he can make them boo. If he wants them to cheer and sing along with them, he can make him do that. They can make them do that. He has complete control of the audience right now. He is he is the star in AEW right now. He is the star. This is his show. It is his company. It is his time. Everybody else is second place or lower. He, I don't even know what they're going to do at Full Gear. And it really doesn't matter because he has gotten so much confidence from me at this point. Whatever they do, I know he's going to make it work. I don't think I know he's going to make it work. Because what has he been involved in and hasn't made it work? He made a musical number with Chris Jericho work. He makes everything work. He should be your favorite wrestler. He's better than your favorite wrestler at something. He might not be better than your favorite wrestler at everything, but he's better than your favorite wrestler at something. That's how good he is right now. Yeah, honestly. It's just he's been outstanding since his return. It's been wonderful to see. And, you know, it's it's great. We'll move over now to Brian Anderson versus Sammy Guevara and a nice uh, little match between a wrestler that everybody loves and a wrestler that everybody hates. Um, I thought this was a good match, honestly. Uh, Sammy was a nice little, like, high-flying combo compared to Danielson, who's a lot more, like, technical and does high-flying stuff when he needs to but doesn't do it all the time. Uh, and I I thought this was a strong little match. And uh, Sammy Guevara... And- At the Home Depot, when you buy select RYOBI tools, you'll get an extra RYOBI OnePlus battery for free. Now you can give a gift that not only keeps on giving, but also keeps your favorite tools going. So whether your holidays sound like this, or this, we have the gifts to make your holiday magic. Plus, get free delivery on over 2 million eligible items from The Home Depot. How doers get more done. Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays. They can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com. I'm getting choked out with the triangle and the elbows to the head. And everything like that. So he's able to get the win despite everything that took place backstage where the Blackpool Combat Club showed a little bit of cracks. Uh, and then we knew that he was going to go and uh, try to talk everything out with the Blackpool Combat Club after this match. Uh, and I thought this was good. I thought this was a good match. Obviously, you know, just kind of keeping the JAS Blackpool Combat stuff, uh, in, like continuing it as much as they can in the smallest way. Uh, but I thought these guys worked really well together. I would have liked to see Sammy be a tad bit more competitive. Thought he was good, 
but it, it just never felt like Brian Danielson was any danger of losing. And I don't know how you do that. I'm not a wrestler, but as a fan, as just a watcher, it just felt like, oh, I'm just waiting for Danielson to win. Sammy Guevara is going to do some really cool moves, and then he's going to lose. And I just felt like they could have went further into making me think Sammy actually had a chance to win. Yeah, I get that. I understand that. And I, I think mean, it's it's not going to be every match. I enjoy good squash matches against the other. But Sammy at this point has been with the company so long. He should be elevating. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, absolutely. And I think you could have done with Sammy getting a little bit more. I think he got a decent amount, but you could have given him more, I think, for sure. But regardless, uh, I will say uh, we now move over to another backstage interview. Ray Phoenix and Alex Abrahentes was interviewed with back with, with Renee. And Ray was talking about how Penta was going to become a double, double champion. Penta and any member of the Death Triangle could be double, double champions. Christian and Luchasaurus come out and uh, they said uh, how Luchasaurus deserved a shot at the All Atlantic Championship in front of, ahead of anybody else. And Orange Cassidy then shows up and it was just like, Next week. So Orange Cassidy is defending the All Atlantic Championship this upcoming Dynamite, and he's defending it against Luchasaurus. I'm Man, very Luchasaurus stoked. To... And Luchasaurus and Oh, yes, and Christian Cage. Yeah, that's right. He no, just said, no, like, no, just... not Christian Cage. Who's the other guy that was there saying they wanted a title shot? It's, no, Phoenix. Luchasaurus and Phoenix. It's on the Luchasaurus go. and Phoenix. Yeah, yes. sorry. So it's becoming a triple, a, a triple threat title. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, they kind of been using that in that set. And it, I think it helps with Orange Cassidy as well to kind of, like, get more action in where Orange Cassidy can slip in and then be able to retain and all that kind of stuff. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, very, a very great segment. And I love Orange Cassidy. He almost seems like he just doesn't want the belt anymore, so he's just going to put himself in the most difficult situations. <laughs> seems that way. He's tired of carrying it. It's too much. It's too He doesn't have the energy to do that. Yeah, it's just... We move over, though, to Riho weight. versus Jamie Hayter. Mm-hmm. It is too much weight. We move over to Riho and Jamie Hayter, who faced off. Big showcase for Jamie Hayter in this one, for sure. Beating a former AEW world champion in that regard. Jamie's been used consistently and been shown a ton. It's been really cool to see her get a lot of usage. Uh, she was able to, like, hit a ripcord lariat and a boot to be able to get the win. Uh, and then interim uh, women's world champion Tony Storm came out. Stood at the top of the stage, holding the belt up high, insinuating that we'll be seeing uh, Tony Storm versus Jamie Hayter maybe in singles competition to be able to find out uh, who would hold that interim championship. And I think it's a huge thing for Jamie Hayter, especially because, again, like the crowd is absolutely behind her, I think. And she's been getting better and better the more that she's been in the ring and showing like how much she's how she's able to accomplish um and I'm just waiting for that moment, too, when eventually she breaks off from uh, Britt Baker, because I think that'll be a huge moment as well when that happens. But it was a, it was the typical one women's match dynamite thing that we're used to. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I did like that she beat a former champion clean. That's what I said. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it was a big, big, strong push there. Yeah, so I think Jamie's continuing to get used a ton, and it's it's done nothing but good things for her, and I'm excited to see like how this little thing with Tony Storm is going to turn out as well, because I think that's a big thing as well. Um, we'll then move, I think now just to the AEW world championship main event, John Moxley versus Penta El Zero Miedo. Uh, these guys did a hell of a match. There is a moment in the match where I swore that Penta was trying to kill everybody when he tried to do the, uh, Canadian destroyer off of the steel steps, like run from the apron onto steel steps, do it off of the steel steps. I'm like, Penta, calm the fuck down. Regardless, though, uh, he was not able to onto the steel steps with the DDT. Um, as the match continued to go, Penta was nearly able to get the win with the Fear Factor. It Moxley kicks out. But at some point, though, he jumps off the ropes, one mistake, and he gets hit with the Paradigm Shift and the Death Rider DDT. Both of those would be enough for Penta to get pinned by John Moxley for him to retain the AEW World Championship mat in this match. Um, huge, huge match, I think, to close out the show. But then William W. Morrissey comes in and knocks down Moxley and the entire firm. 
come into the ring and they start beating down on Moxley, not living up to what was promised by uh, Stokely Hathaway to MJF, and they were beating the hell out of him. MJF comes out onto the ramp and he's conflicted. He doesn't know what to do and he's about to take off his shirt and run out there, but eventually he puts his head on, hand on his head and just he walks to the back again. They are still beating up on Moxley. A few seconds go by. He speeds to the ring. He's going to try to stop them. And he runs and shoves everybody in the firm away from Moxley. He looks tired. And that gave the open go for Ethan Page to kick MJF in the face. They proceed to jump MJF. And they threw him around, beat the shit out of him. He got hit with the Eagle's Edge. And then W. Morrissey choke slams him through the table and MJF is dead. And Excalibur just said, well, I guess neither the champion or the challenger will be walking into full gear at 100% for this title match. So, Floyd, you want to go over to you, talk about this match and this closing segment of Dynamite. The match was just a classic Moxley match. Him and Pentagon, you know, they're always going to have their working shoes on. Very good match. Uh, Good, you know, it was kind of like... Uh, AEW kind of making up for the Hangman match not uh, working out well, so that was fun. Uh, I am more intrigued by the end of the show because I have no idea how this is going to play out. I have my theories, but I really don't want it, it, it to me. The different ways it could play out uh, lead us to be a little more like surprised so i want to go ahead and try to leave it to surprise i'm not going to speculate a lot on what i think is going to happen but i just think it's it's kind of up in the air right now it's like the firm is kind of turn it turned on mjf so are we going to go a little wwe-ish are we going to get a john moxley and mjf tag match against the firm what are we going to do this what's going to happen next and that's how i love for a show to lay leave me that is how more wrestling shows that leave me. I literally was left at the end of the show wondering what, I, what was going to happen the next week. I know I have to watch Dynamite to, today or tomorrow, whatever you're listening, to actually figure out uh, what's going to happen next. And that's a great feeling to have. Oh, yeah, no question. I'm, I'm very interested to see what comes of this because, again, it's, it's a weird feeling because um, – like I said, it's been a lot more of babyface-like things that have been happening regarding MJF, um, and it's interesting. I don't know where we're going with it. I always go in with MJF doing anything in the slightest with a with the biggest grain of salt because this man is a snake, and you know it from what he he's told you he's a snake. So and I'm very even, interested to see what comes of worse this. Than a snake. He calls himself the devil. And the devil so, himself yeah, and yeah, calls yeah, his yeah. fans devil worshippers. Come on, dude. You know, you, you think the devil would stop it, you know, letting his whole crew beat him up so he could That's what I'm saying. Yeah, it's like, no, we're we're gonna see. Yeah, I'm very interested to see how this continues to grow. But that was AEW Dynamite from last week. We'll quickly move over to Rampage. Um, which had the AEW World Championship Eliminator match where Jim Moxley defended the title again, this time against Daddy Magic, Matt Menard, uh, from the JAS. Moxley was able to get a pretty quick win in that regard, and uh, Stokely Hathaway came out and had Lee Moriarty at his side and we talked about how he beat up on uh, him in that dynamite uh, that took place. And he said, "You're gonna, how about you go one-on-one with Lee Moriarty next week on Dynamite? Moxley talked about he was a talented package to show like, you know what, we know you're way more of a visual learner because you're not all there up there. So they showed a whole video package of Lee Moriarty building himself up with the Tiger style thing. Moxley's like, you're one talented guy and uh, the BCC really likes you and you were you were considered, but you were hanging with the wrong crowd. If you want to match with John Moxley, all you had to do is ask, and it's like that's all anybody has to do. And he said, "I'll see you at your ass in Baltimore." So we're gonna get Moxley versus uh, Lee Moriarty, keeping Moxley involved with the firm in that regard, and he'll defend the title on Dynamite tonight. Um, and yeah, I mean, I get it. Um, it's gonna be a story building match as opposed to you know big match feel or whatnot but i'm excited to see how the firm at least does something in this because 
they're they're really trying with this group, and I know a lot of people aren't feeling it, but I'm I'm interested to see at least like how this continues to grow. I like the group if Ethan Page Ethan Page is going to be at the front of it, you know. Same. Because I really, I'm a really, really big Ethan fan. Uh, Ethan Page fan. I was a fan of his in Impact, saying why is he not in AEW the whole time he was still there. Uh, Morrissey, honestly, same for me. Morrissey uh, was like, why isn't he in AEW? And they're both in AEW. So Ethan Page with Morrissey as his heavy is, a it, to me, a main event act right there. And I'm not even talking about everybody else, the Gun Club and uh, Lee Moriarty and everyone else in the act. But, you know, Ethan Page with, as the leader or the front man with uh, Morrissey as his heavy, man, that that's intimidating right there. For sure, for sure. We then had Limitless Keith Lee meeting up on Serpentico in a quick match. However, this led to the biggest image of Rampage. Uh, Tony Schiavone comes out to interview Keith Lee, but the AW World Tag Team Champions, the acclaim, come down. And there's no rap, and he had, they had to apologize because we're out here with serious business and some questions for Keith Lee. Max and I were with Billy all morning, and then all of a sudden he goes MIA, not answering our calls, not a sneaky swerve. Sneaky swerve is nowhere to be seen. So, yo, we know you know where he is. Where is he? And literally, uh, Shivani said uh, Billy had a family emergency and had to leave early today. And Keith's out here being like, "I'm not swerve. Why are you asking me?" Like all of a sudden, he appears on the screen. And he talks about how they're going to be facing off, and he's really uh, showcasing his directorial skills because he's so good at everything. Uh, and his favorite genre is horror. And he has Billy stra- strapped up and tied to a chair, and he's talking shit. And he's like, "Ah, you're really funny. All right, now f- stop messing around." And Swerve was like, "You're not going to be anywhere to cost us this time around." And he's like, there's nothing you're going to do. He's like, I'm going to be there. Like, what are you talking about? And then that's when Swerve pulls out a pair of pliers, puts it on Billy's fingers who are tied behind his back, and he gets right up onto his side, and he goes at his fingers with the pliers, and then that put together the best thumbnail image. Like, full-on, like, uh, Heidenreich, Michael Cole levels of this imagery. Or oh, actually, no, it was it was uh, Michael Cole, and, uh, and that wasn't Michael Cole, was it? Was it a... Uh, Oh, uh, you're cutting out. So it was what Michael Cole and who are you thinking about? Okay. Okay. Are you? you back? I, I'm, I'm back now. I'm back now. I'm back now. I don't know what happened. It just went away. I was in the middle. I like. I was asking a question. And I looked down. And I see my internet's down. I'm just like, God damn it. So I was talking, but like. The image from that thumbnail that's been going around from this whole segment when he got his fingers, like, snapped by the pliers, it was full Heidenreich. But, like, what was the commentator that was, like, read a poem in the closet by Heidenreich? Was it Cole or was it Josh Matthews? I believe it was Cole. Okay, because that's what level this was, because it was fucking hysterical. It was it was despicable, I swear, of what he did, but... And Keith Lee was all taken aback by it, but the image... The image that we got from that moment, legendary. This was like one of my favorite things Rampage has done in months. Like that image, like I don't give a fuck about the match. It's that image. It's like, oh my God. It's Thank simple. you so much for that. Yeah, it's simple. You put your hands on me. So I'm going to make it where you, during our last match, so I'm going to make it where you can't put your hands on me next time. And you can't scissor nobody. Yeah, by breaking your fingers. And I lug it, I dug it, it's evil swerve. I mean, like, he's been doing, like, kind of shitty things, but this was this was the full-on heel turn. He's a full-on bad guy. <laughs> you kidnap somebody and you break their fingers with pliers, pil- pil- I think we can put you under the option that is heal at this point. No, absolutely. I think you can you can absolutely put that under that whole idea. And Keith Lee, dude, I mean, like, I don't know why you were ro- ro- rocking with this dude at this point. I get you got title shots at this point, but, like, you know, you could be world champion at this point, dude. Let, let Swerve go. Let him do his thing and 
snap people's fingers and whatnot or whatever. Uh, we then moved over to Ty Mello facing off against Madison Rain. Uh, and this was a fine enough match, I feel like. Um, I didn't really have too much else that I was like really focused on too much with this, but I thought it was fine. Ty got the win for sure. And uh, yeah, I thought it, it was a basic rampage match with the women. I thought they did a decent job, I think. Yeah, I thought it was, yeah, just a really good match. I, Ty is a full-on heel. I I don't know if I like it. I thought I thought she was much better. She's than- much, she's, she's, well, first of all, Ty's great in that heel role when you're attached to Sammy because that's the whole idea, you know? You can be a heel, like, she's so, the reason why people hated her was when she was doing stuff with Sammy. And... People were cool with her when she was a babyface, and yeah. before all no, Sammy's like, stuff. Not, not even cool with her. Flat out loved her. Yeah, flat out loved her. That everybody in that building wanted her to beat Jade when they were at the pay per view. I forgot what show that was, but everybody in that building wanted Ty to beat Jade. Jade won, but they, oh my god, it was going to be such a moment whenever Ty won the title, and it's just like when she's playing in the hill. I think she's good. But I thought she was great as a baby face. Yeah. No, I I think that um I think she was and it's 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 simply because I mean like at that point like like it's like it's I mean like I said I wanted her to be like the edge and Lita uh when they were when her them and Sammy were together and all that kind of stuff. People loved Lita like heavily as a babyface. They only started hating her when she was with Edge, and then like even when she was just by herself, then people started going back like, "Well, Lita's sick" and all that kind of stuff. I feel like, so I think I think what I asked for, I kind of got in full full force. Yeah, and like I, I mean, I've always liked Madison Rain. She's always been really good. So this was a good match. It's just like sometimes you look at somebody and you're like man i think you're miscast and i think ty is miscast as a heel but whenever she turns babyface it's going to be such a bigger moment if she ever does yeah for sure uh lexi nair was interviewing ethan page and they he had a great little promo where he talked about like we didn't decide all of a sudden to change it was mjf who decided to change his plans he was like all of a sudden he can do things the right way we made him number one contender but he decides to change and we decided to stop doing favors for you so like you know what you can enjoy your week off but don't be too happy mox because now ethan page has entered into the full gear eliminator tournament uh and I gotta say, like I said, use this to get Ethan Page doing a bunch of shit because that dude is dope as hell. Yeah, I definitely want uh, Ethan Page to win this tournament. I don't know if he would because, uh, you know, the winner of the tournament gets their title shot at Winner is Coming. Winner is Coming is in Dallas, Texas. Who will be, who do you know that will be at that show, Austin? So, yeah. Uh, now, I would be yeah. very excited about seeing Mr. Ethan Page main eventing a show in Dallas. My home territory, so I'm looking forward to what they got planned. Yeah, main event of Rampage TNT Championship between Wardlow and the Kingdom's Matt Taven. All right, I haven't gotten to talk about this. Uh, this is a whole ordeal about the basically the fact that AEW has has brought in the Kingdom, and um, now the Kingdom's changed a little bit uh, it's over over the time period. So the kingdom that we have here is Matt Taven, Mike Bennett, and Maria Kanellis. Love seeing Maria and Mike. I like them a lot. I got a problem with Matt Taven. Not a fan. So. Whoa, guess, you're not a fan of Matt Taven? I am not a fan of Matt Taven. Because I'm Matt Taven. Uh, <laughs> no, um, and it's like kind of funny with me. I'm a fan of the kingdom. I think Matt Taven is very energetic. He's a, I I didn't want to use this term because I am not trying to offend anyone. He's a great hand, you know, he's really good wrestler. So like he, you know, he always can, he can make a person boo or cheer depending on what you need him to do. So I am, you know, I'm pro Taven. Pro Taven is the best way I can, uh, uh, the best way I can say it. I'm pro I, w- I won't discredit his wrestling ability at any point, but I just never saw anything of him. And if I'm not mistaken, wasn't he like one of the key factors in Ring of Honor going under the first time around? I mean, sure, yes. Like, but oh yeah, the key factor was not 
signing Cody in the Bucks back. But I mean, yeah, if you wanted to go, if you wanted to go after that, it was just you were at your hottest point. You know, you were at your hottest point in a company history, and you know the people that made you hot left. And I think that was going to be anybody. It was like when Jordan left the Bulls. It was like, you know. The Bulls were going to yeah. suck it. I get that, yeah. There was, but there was uh, regardless, Wardlow and T- Matt Taven faced off. They kind of used uh, uh, Wardlow's tweet knee at one point, which uh, was happened because uh, Mike Bennett proceeded to uh, ambush him. It didn't work out very well for him. But at some point, uh, his knee was thrown into the steel steps and all that kind of stuff. And it was uh, them giving a little bit of offense. But at some point, the Wardlow gets, sends Taven for the F-10. And then you start setting them up for the uh, power bombs, you know, and, and they do it again and again. At point after the fourth that one, kind of they the pin Mike, uh, Matt Taven, and uh, Mike Bennett comes in and the he chop blocks Wardlow in the knee. Uh, the Ring of Honor television he champion came himself, came Samoa Joe, comes out, Hangman. evening up everything. Like, Powerhouse Hobbs. Uh, Ring of Honor's current stars. They took their future star in Hangman. I mean, I mean. That, that was a big, that was a big, like, loss. You know, I remember I went to an ROH show in Dallas, right, specifically to see Cody. And it was, like, three ROH shows in that time that I went to see Cody. And I wasn't the only one. It was, like, when you went in the crowd, <coughs> like, 40 to 50% were to either see Cody, Hangman, the Young Bucks. That's why they showed up. All of a sudden, Losing his music hits, and he comes in you really didn't have and run, walks down to the ring, that and that's when the embassy jumps in, in ambushes Wardlow and Samoa Joe. Hobbs gets in, and he's helping the embassy. So then he proceeds to grab Wardlow's uh, TNT championship, holding it up, while Brian Cage hosts up Samoa Joe's television championship. So we had like a combination of these two people showcasing who they're going after, and... Powerhouse Hobbs seems to have joined another group. He's joined the end. It's been it would that whole that whole ending was so chaotic. You know, it was kind of like you know you couldn't really like firmly say like for sure. So the crazy thing is, you know, I think he's joined the embassy. I do think he's joined the embassy. But the crazy thing is, there hasn't been any kind of real announcement that he's yeah. Like I thought for sure, but that I think we'll move off of that because that was the end of Rampage and we can go through our little little preview for Dynamite for next week. uh, We're going to have a birthday bash for Daddy on the AEW's webpage. They really haven't said anything to it and I think that even makes me more excited about the match that's going to happen on Wednesday. We'll talk about it later because I think it's leading, you know, I think Will Hobbs tomorrow night is going to... uh, you know, say say what side he's on. Yes, uh, even though he has no fingers at this point in time. Darby Allen will be going one-on-one with Jay Lethal. Jade Cargill will face Marina Shafir for the TBS Championship. Oh, God. Uh, Renee Young will have a sit-down interview with uh, Soraya and Britt Baker. John Moxley versus Lee Moriarty in Eliminator uh, uh, Championship match. Samoa Joe versus Brian Cage. Orange Cassidy, Luchasaurus, Ray Phoenix for the uh, All-Atlantic Championship. And then, of course, Chris Jericho will face a former Ring of Honor World Champion for the ROH World title. Yeah, um, yeah, it's going to be super. Man, this uh, this is like, if you look at the thing and on paper, it's like completely loaded show. Like, completely loaded. I'm like, you know... Uh, Max and uh, they're they're gonna make the daddy ass bar- birthday bash work, and you know they're gonna get interrupted. Mm-hmm. So we're gonna see what goes on there. We're going to get, uh, you know, I, and apparently, I've I've learned this weekend, and I'm not gonna go any further into it. If you don't want to see a match, don't tweet that out. Don't do it. That's just stupid. Um, but yeah, Renee sitting around with Soraya and Britt is going to be fun. Uh, yeah, uh, and Samoa Joe versus Brian Cage, big meaty man. There's slapping. your big man, dude. There's there, your big man. You know, if you give me one big meaty man slap and meat match a week, I, you know what? I'm I'm going to be okay with that. So I'm looking forward to Samoa Joe and Brian Cage because I think at this point you're going to see where Will Hobbs' loyalties officially lie. I think so as well. I'm very interested to see uh, where that whole and disappointingly because they have a show in Japan on Friday. I'm down FTR <clears throat> on the show tonight. 
Probably, yeah. I believe that's going to be the case. Um, but that'll do it for our preview. We got some headlines and other things to say. I want to say real quick in terms of like, you know, we wrapped up with Halloween. Uh, the winner of Halloween for AEW is Hikaru Shida. She dressed up as Lady Dimitrescu from Resident Evil 8 and she fucking killed it. So that is my winner for Halloween in AEW. I have to say she wins. She wins all the awards for Halloween. Oh, okay. I have no idea who that is. Because you play Madden and Madden and Madden and Madden. Play yes. Resident Evil 8. Play good games. Yeah, Madden is a good game. It's been around longer than Resident <laughs> Evil. Consistently. Consistently great. So great. That Has it been a- Hang on. I, well, hang on. It might be... Well, because well, it might be close, actually. The Resident Evil came out in, like, 1989? <laughs> Resident Evil, the series started... Uh, not films. I want the game. Uh, 1996 was the original Resident yeah. Evil. Yeah, I so, was I was 10 yeah. or 11 when Madden came so, out. So 90, so 1990 was the first Madden, right? Yeah, something like that. Yeah. Okay, so, there you go. So no, like so Madden's been around forever. It's the only NFL game. That's how dominant it is. It's there's it. There's only one NFL game. It's Madden. It's dominant because of money, not because of quality. Uh, to the victors goes history. The victors write history. Madden won. <laughs> So the history is they're the one because they're the best. Boom. You know, and that's from Madden too. Boom. Now, um, now I'm really, yeah, super excited about this show this week. It's going to be lit. Uh, yeah, uh, news. News. Congrats. It was announced. And I think it was at Jacksonville. And we might have talked about it last week. I don't remember. So I'm going to say it again. Congrats to Willow Nightingale. AEW, she's all elite. She got the sign. She got the stamp. She's always been elite in my heart. Glad she's in there. I didn't know if we talked about it last week. I didn't remember. I don't. I'm not gonna go back and listen to an hour show to find out if I said like three words. So congrats to Willow and Nightingale on that. PWI's top 150 list came out. AEW was well represented, and we kind of went AEW and AEW adjacent. Uh, Number three was Thunder Rosa. Congrats to her. Number five, Jay Cargill. Number 13, Britt Baker. Number 25, Tony Storm. 28, Mercedes Martinez. 40, Willow Nightingale. 60, Ruby Soho. 64, Jamie Hayter. 65, Hikaru Shida. 76, Athena. 80, Kylan King. That's the AEW adjacent person because she hasn't got the... Uh, 96, Layla Gray. 100, Kira Hogan. 103, Anna J. And it, you know, it's kayfabe list. It's based on, based on your booking over the last year. I was shocked that Mercedes Mar- Mercedes Martinez was twenty eight. She is the current ROH Women's Champion, so you know you feel like you're the women's title. But I was pretty satisfied where, wherever um, where everybody just lined up. Thunder Rosa was only beaten out by Syria from uh, uh, what is it? Uh, Stardom and uh, what's what's her name? Bianca Belair. Sorry. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, she was only beat out by those two. I can live with that. Bianca Belair was probably the most pushed woman over the last year. And so, to me, it was actually shocking that she wasn't number one. I was very surprised about that as well. Yeah. I don't watch Stardom. Uh, if you ever want to catch up on Stardom, get introduced to Stardom. Learn about Stardom. We have this show called One Nation Radio with James uh, with James on it. And James Boyd, and he is an, an expert, the resident expert on stardom. He's their biggest fan. He knows all the matches. He has delved into the history. So, you know, they have a segment every week on One Nation Radio where they just talk about stardom. So if that's something that hearing this name got you excited for and, like, you decided you want to see, tune into One Nation Radio. I mean, much larger audience than us, so I am doubt I'm giving them any rub but, I mean, like, anything I do know about Joshi Wrestling, anything I do know about stardom, I've learned from James Boyd and One Nation Radio. So, definitely, if you want, uh, want that, uh, if that's something you're looking to, especially after seeing Syria being number one, go ahead and check them out. Uh, like I said, Bianca Belair was just, like, literally the most pushed star in WWE other than Roman Reigns. So... Really shocked that she wasn't number one. All right, and I think there's one other thing uh, that we got to cover too. Thing. Yes, 
One other thing, ROH Final Battle tickets go on sale Friday. I talked about this before, and this that's the fourth. I've talked about it before, but I thought it was going to be through Ticketmaster, so I want to make sure you're clear. This is going to be an access event. The tickets are sold through the uh, UTA uh, a website, so you'll be going through to access and log in. Uh, there will probably be uh, probably be a pre-sale on Thursday with a pre-sale ID, so make sure you're checking. If you're not a part of All Elite Fleet, make sure you're in that. Make sure you're following the UTA uh, Arena's website because they drop uh, pre-sale codes. And at WrestleTix is another place that drops the pre-sale codes. I will be at the show. So if you know me, come say hi, and I'm looking forward because uh, I'm looking forward to that. So yeah, I, that's all the news. Other than you know, welcome to the Christmas season. If you want a Christmas present, just let me know what it is. I may or may not get it. And also, I would like to say as well, um, I want to. It's it's since Floyd wanted to bring up the Christmas stuff as well. Uh, I have to uh, mention about uh, a poor passing in terms of the uh, Christmas uh, holiday specials. Um, now, if you are familiar with shows like, you know, the Christmas specials like A Year Without a Santa Claus, Frosty the Snowman, Santa Claus is Coming to Town, um, f- the popular uh, film uh, group Rankin Bass, uh, which was ran by Arthur Rankin Jr. and Jules Bass, who are responsible for all of those great, wonderful uh Christmas specials that you are so familiar with, for sure. Rankin Bass Animated, they made all of those amazing uh, Christmas specials. Unfortunately, a few days ago, Jules Bass, the last member of that team that made those specials, uh, unfortunately passed away. Um, And again, Rudolph, Frosty, all those great ones that were in the 60s and 70s, you know, if you if you have not seen any of those, because my friend Floyd here has never seen a year without a Santa Claus, I don't know how with how much this man loves Christmas because I that thing that that special must have been on at least forty times a year when I grew up uh, for Christmas uh, over my entire lifespan. So I recommend that if you somehow have not seen that, or if you aren't, haven't seen the original Frosty the Snowman or Rudolph or any of the claymation like Christmas specials that everybody like falls in love with and all that kind of stuff, watch them, please. They're good. They're really good. Yes, and you, you can watch my favorite Christmas cartoon special, Alvin Chipmunk's Christmas. It's from the seventies, early. I think it's like early eighties, seventies. It's uh, the, with the golden harmonica. Definitely check that out. Uh, but yeah, dude, Hallmark, dude. I'm like, I'm only an hour and four minutes from Hallmark being on uh, the Peacock. So every day, if you want to follow me on Twitter at Floyd Johnson Jr., I will be posting what Christmas movies I'm watching well into January because. This is my time of year. I mean, I like, I, I, you know, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to love this time of year. I've extended it because I love it so much. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. All right. I think on that note, I think that can close things out for this episode of All Things Elite. Of course, my internet decides to be absolutely perfect at the end because yes. I've had no problems and it's at full bars now. I love this. It's so great. It's not stressful or annoying at all. Uh, guys, thank you so much for listening and sticking with us. For all of these episodes, please continue to download this fine show on Google or Apple Podcasts. And if you listen to us on Spotify or wherever you choose to listen to us on, give us a share with your friends, family, coworkers, whoever you wish. You can also leave a rating and a review. Let us know how we are doing. We are at AT Elite Pod on Twitter, at Social Suplex of the guys that make this show possible. Check out all the shows they have on their network. You won't be disappointed. I am at Austin Sumowitz, S-Z-U-M-O-W-I-C-Z. Floyd is at Floyd Johnson Jr. on Twitter. And I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to Floyd as he can go ahead and take this home, take it all the way to the end zone, and he can close us out on this episode of All Things Elite. I don't want a lot for Chris. Oh, no, I'm not going to do it. <laughs> I know everybody's going to be tired of that song by January, so I'm not going to do that for by you. By January? They're going to be tired about it by, like, November t- 20th. I think, you know, it's my... F- it's not my favorite Christmas song, but it's like two. So it's like one of the, you know, the greatest songs ever. I love Mariah Carey to death. But uh, Ed Sheeran, Ed Sheeran, Elton John, Merry Christmas. Put that in your playlist. There you go. Now, um, yeah, so uh, just shout out to everybody. Uh, we're, we're hitting towards this time of year. 
where I'm just saying just be extra nice to people. Look out for what you can do. Man, if you see somebody in line, you know, at the grocery store and they're struggling, hook them up, buy somebody a cup of coffee. Just, you know, show joy every one thing. I know all those things were money, but, you know, help your friend move. Do, some, do something free if you can. Whatever you can do, just do what you can to reach out to people. Let them know you love them and how much they mean to you. You should be doing it all year, but if we don't. We don't do it all year. It's, it's a fact. So now, this time of year, take your time. Do it. Tell your people you love them. And with that, I will leave you how I always leave you. Whether they're just home, work, or school, always do your best to be elite. Tired of long waits and rushed care at the ER and urgent care clinic? Next time, stay home and let Dispatch Health bring the power of the hospital to you. I call Dispatch Health. A care team of medical professionals actually come to your house. They're the same caliber of people that you would see if you were at a hospital or an urgent care. Dispatch Health can treat most non-life-threatening emergencies. They can do the x-rays, they can do stitches. Urinary tract infections, blood tests, urinalysis, ultrasound. It's almost everything that they can do at the ER. You never feel rushed. They're there for you and only you. I felt like their only patient. And it costs no more than a trip to urgent care because Dispatch Health is covered by most insurance, including Medicare. See if we serve your home at DispatchHealth.com. Dispatch Health really went above and beyond. It's wonderful to have care come to your home. House calls are back and they're better than ever. Learn more at DispatchHealth.com.